Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And our first story today will tell us that no matter how you look or dress, there's always a chance to meet your Karen at the store and maybe even more than one. Two for one deal on Karens. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories every single day. So I got two today. Not nearly as dramatic as my previous IDWH experience, but still rude, annoying, and stupid. Also, major rambling warning. Can't help myself. No brain left. For context, I'm reasonably unconventional appearance-wise. Very multicolored hair, multiple tattoos, and facial piercings. Generally a bit scruffy looking. I definitely rock a look I'd be unlikely to get away with working retail. And today was wearing a black t-shirt, WTNV again, must bring out the nutters, with a pair of tie-dyed pants so baggy they fit my fat butt with room for a few friends and maybe a surfboard. Honestly, no, part of these pants aside from the waistband actually touches my skin, and I love them because, all reason, fashion crime aside. I work at a school for very disadvantaged teenagers and stupidly volunteered to do Christmas for them, which means a present for everyone enrolled. 26 girls, 36 boys, and food hampers for families who otherwise wouldn't have anything nice to eat over the holidays. About 30. I had four hours to get this done on a budget, and I'm exhausted and traumatized and very underpaid, thanks so very much. For gifts, I decide on perfumes slash colognes. As incredible as I'd like to pretend to be sometimes, I doubted my ability to find something personal for all 62 kids in a single shopping trip and it's a luxury they wouldn't otherwise be able to enjoy, so off to a major discount chemist I go. It was hell. There were more people in this pharmacy than I thought existed in my entire city, and of course all of them are in the perfume section. People are literally climbing all over each other. It looked like the videos I've seen of Black Friday sales in America. Seriously, how do you do that to yourselves? Every year. I actually turned on my heel and walked back out to the van, but reminded myself it's for the kids several thousand times before diving back in. 40 minutes and some mild bruising later, I had four baskets full of perfume and cologne and was carefully making my way towards the end of the queue, about three and a half kilometers from the checkout. When my shoulder was firmly tapped, I looked over to see a total Karen in three-quarter jeans, a pastel blouse, and the I want to speak to the manager haircut. Just a complete walking meme. Yes. I need one of those. She pointed to one of the perfumes in my topmost basket. Um, they were over there in the perfume section. But I'm pretty sure I got the last one. I turned and kept maneuvering my tower of baskets toward the queue. She stepped around me, nearly knocking over my effing baskets and blocked the aisle. Staff can't just buy everything on sale before customers put them back. She shouted the last bit. Who shouts? I've never needed to shout. The F? I don't work here. I'm shopping. You're in my way. Move. It's hot. I'm exhausted. I'm trying to do math in my head. Do not F with me. She reached into my basket and grabbed the perfume she wanted. My jaw hit the floor, and I genuinely had no idea how to respond. I mean, I wasn't going to fight a middle-aged woman for a 15 bottle of perfume. My other options didn't sound great either. Fight my way back into the front of the store with my leaning tower of baskets and search for another perfume in the right price range or for a staff member to help me. So I just stared at her, completely baffled as to what was happening right that moment, and she stared back as if daring me to do something. Thankfully, she had drawn the attention of a security guard who took back the perfume, told her off for harassing customers, and asked her to continue her shopping or leave. Lovely security guard also took my baskets and put them behind the counter so I could join the queue and pay for them when I got to the front. Bless him. I congratulated myself for surviving another IDWH encounter and coming in under budget and moved on to the next part of my shopping hell. Hampers. This required a trip to a major supermarket and I knew I'd need about four trolleys worth of groceries. Inspired by lovely security guard, I spoke to customer service when I got there and explained what I was doing. They allowed me to bring each trolley to the customer service desk when it was full so I could continue shopping and pay all at once at the end. They also offered to help me get it all out to the van. Lovely customer service. I was halfway through trolley number three when I heard an excuse me. I turned around thinking, oh F, not again. Go away, Karen. 
to see a perfectly nice looking little old lady. Phew. Where do I find the baking soda? Sorry, no idea. Baking soda wasn't on my list, and the only thing that mattered in that moment was my effing list, written in purple textra, because somebody at my work must eat bureaus on the back of a reading comprehension worksheet, crumpled and sweaty and nearly unreadable. What do you mean you have no idea? You're doing the shelves. She gestured around me, my trolley, my list, and the near-empty shelf behind me. I mean, if by doing the shelves, she means removing 30 of everything from them, then sure, I was doing the shelves. I don't usually shop here. Ask up front. I didn't think it was necessary to tell her that I didn't work there. I wasn't wearing red, and my pants can be seen from space. So even if her eyesight wasn't great, I wasn't in anything approaching a uniform, unless stoners have uniforms now. I wasn't even close to done for the day. I still had shopping to do. Then I had to get it all back to campus, unpack it, split it out into hampers, and package it back up, wrap 62 presents, and write tags and cards for all of it. I had less than two hours left. I was running on pure adrenaline and a constant mantra of, it's for the kids. Which is, of course, when the nice little old lady revealed herself to be nothing more than a retired Karen and started screeching about bad service and calling managers. I couldn't even muster the Fs to respond. I just kept wandering down the aisles, periodically emptying shelves into my trolley. She followed me, screeching, for two whole aisles. Unfortunately for her, I work with teenagers and there's no amount of noise I can't drown out. She was at the customer service desk when I went to deposit trolley number three, complaining about the rude staff member that wouldn't help her find baking soda. She didn't see me, so I continued on, leaving her to describe me to a baffled employee at the service desk. Sorry, mate. Crap to do. Never volunteering to do Christmas again. Not without a raise, time off in lieu, and a puppy. Written in purple texta because someone at my work must eat bureaus. I'm too American to try to translate this in my head. And our second story today. Truancy officer thinks I'm a high school student. My family moved to the South after I graduated high school, so my brother had two years left and they do block scheduling for classes. All that means is some days he'd get out of school earlier than what we did at our old high school. I go to pick him up from school. It's like a three-hour bus ride or 15 minutes if I pick him up. One day about one o'clock and I'm waiting out of my car in the pickup area kind of near the doors. Here comes the truancy officer. Excuse me, miss, but school isn't out yet. You should be in class. Me. I already graduated high school. I'm here to pick up my younger brother. He gets out at like 115 or 130. Truancy officer. I've seen you here before. You need to be in class. What's your name? I show him my ID. Out of state. Truancy officer. I know that last name. You do go here. Come inside the office. Me. Well, obviously, brother and I would have the same last name. We're siblings. So I go in because, one, I don't want to keep having this issue every time I pick him up. And, two... I do need to collect brother as we both have to go to work. Different jobs, thank God. So we make our way to the office where truancy officer tells them to look up my name. Office lady. We don't have a student by that name. We do have another student with the same last name. Truancy officer. That's her then. She just gave me the wrong name on purpose. Office lady. The other student is a male, sir. She doesn't go here. Me. That'd be my brother. Could you page him for me? Truancy officer. No, I've seen her here before. She goes to school here. Office lady. Sir, she doesn't go to school here. We have no record of any student with her name. Leave her be. Brother arrives to the office looking confused. Brother, hey sis, you uh, ready to go? Truancy officer. See, she does go here. Why would she know students if she doesn't? Brother, my sister's here to pick me up from school. She isn't in the system because she is not a student. Truancy officer, but I see her here every day outside. Brother turned to the office lady and asked if it's okay for us to dip out. She says, yep, so we skedaddle. As we're leaving, we can hear office lady trying to explain to truancy officer that all current students are in the system and that if he brings in one more random person that he sees outside every day claiming they're a student, she's going to file a complaint on him. Brother, I've only been here for a month and I already know this guy's a moron. And our third story. I don't work here, lady. Now you owe me an apology. I was told about this subreddit, and I have one for everybody to enjoy. I was at a major electronics store known for their blue polo shirts. 
I just got off work at a warehouse and had a blue t-shirt on. I was looking at movies when I heard a woman snapping her fingers right at my face and in an angry loud tone saying, excuse me. I slowly turned to see a middle-aged woman standing there in a PO'd pose glaring at me. You need to go get whatever item she was looking for from the back. It was only then that I realized what had happened. I quietly replied that I didn't work there, which just set her off in a rage. Now, I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was along the lines of, listen here, you stupid idiot. I know you work here. You have a blue shirt on. You're so effing lazy. I'm going to get you fired. Where's your manager? Now, I usually don't yell at people, but something about her just pissed me off. Listen here, lady. I don't work here. Just because I'm wearing a blue shirt doesn't mean that. I am a customer. Now, leave me alone. It was at that point that a real employee came over to see what the fuss was about. She saw this employee and demanded to see a manager. It was less than a minute when a manager came over to talk to her. Yes, how may I help you? The lady screamed about my incompetence and demanded I apologize to her before I was fired. I looked at the manager and shook my head. The manager looked at me in a bewildered state and said to the lady, Ma'am, he doesn't work here. And just because he has a blue t-shirt on doesn't mean he works here. Now, I will get you an employee to help you. He turned to lead the lady to lead her away, but I wanted one thing first. Excuse me, but I want one thing first. I looked directly at the woman in the eye and said, you owe me an apology. The woman looked around in a bewildered state. The manager looked surprised, but said nothing. The woman turned to a sheepish look while mumbling, I'm sorry. Good on you for demanding an apology. Maybe some of these people will actually learn something and thank you all for watching the video to the end. And I'll see you in the next one.